Welcome to Great Gear. I'm Matthew Masada Baron. For many years, technology was all about making things bigger. Bigger factories, bigger cars, bigger dams, and bigger power plants. Since the digital revolution, though, there has been a boom in technologies dealing with the very small, both natural and man-made. On today's program, we take a look at three of them as we dive into a world of things so small you can't even see them. Here's today's little lineup. Air filters are a common sight in Japanese homes and offices. While they may cut down on pollen and dust, there wasn't much they could do about airborne viruses. Until now. We'll tell you more on today's gadget segment. Bigger isn't always better, particularly when it comes to state-of-the-art electronics and cutting-edge technologies. And many recent improvements have been made possible thanks to nanotechnology. For our on-site report this week, we'll visit Nanotech 2014 to see some of the many ways that this tiny tech is improving our world. Finally, for today's special report, we'll take a look at nanobubbles. These extremely small pockets of air may hold the key to revitalizing parts of the ocean. And thanks to some new technology, they are simpler than ever to produce. Here in Japan and the rest of the Northern Hemisphere, it's winter. Time for skiing, snowmen, sledding, snowball fights, and influenza. Pretty much every year at this time, we get hit with an outbreak of the latest and greatest version of the flu bug. Lots of people here wear a surgical mask in public and carry hand sanitizers to ward it off. But one company in Tokyo has a product that might be much more effective at stopping the spread of nasty viruses. Our atmosphere is filled with viruses and other harmful substances. Thanks to emission regulations, Tokyo Air is cleaner today than it was during the time of the high growth economy in the late 20th century. Still, it looks like this when put under a microscope. We visited a small company located in an office building in eastern Tokyo. While there is nothing about this office space that appears out of the ordinary, its air is actually almost completely germ-free. Creating the sterile environment is this air purifier. It can eliminate 99.9% .9 of the germs found within a 25 cubic meter space in about 11 minutes. We spoke with Ryuhei Kamei, the president of the company that makes this air purifier. え、the water, called hypochlorous acid water, is harmless to the human body. これにキャップ it's very simple. Just what is hypochlorous acid water? When a spike bonds with a receptor in a human body, you have an infection. え、there is a secret in the filter too. Jokinsui 
It's a simple but very different construction compared to other electric dust collecting air purifiers. Employees at this company regularly use the hypochlorous acid water as an antiseptic. Hypochlorous acid water is safe to drink. It is often used to wash vegetables at food processing plants and to sterilize baby bottles. Outbreaks of viruses and pandemic diseases don't only happen in movies. A flu virus might suddenly mutate and cause a pandemic, in which case this fast-working air purifier is sure to work wonders at hospitals, schools and nursing homes. Kamei believes there is a need for this product, particularly in developing countries. Eventually, he wants to manufacture the air purifier and hypochlorous acid water in such countries so that it helps create new jobs for the local people. I'm not going to complain if there is something out there that would prevent me from catching the flu. But we need to remember that there are millions of bacteria around us in the air and inside our bodies. Most of them either have no effect on us or are actually beneficial. Researchers are beginning to suspect that the rising number of children with asthma and other allergies is connected to an increased use of antibiotics. Antibiotics don't discriminate between the bad bacteria and the good. So, instead of trying to make our world sterile, maybe the best way to keep the flu bug in check is to wash our hands with soap, and when we do get sick, stay home. Bacteria and viruses aren't the only things out there too small to see. These days, a number of really, 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 really small things are actually man-made. Reporter Brian Hughes tells us more from Nanotech 2014. Hi, welcome to Tokyo Big Sight for Nanotech 2014. It's the best place to find the largest players in this sub-micro field. More and more nanotechnology is a part of everyday life. It's involved in everything from medicine to manufacturing and fashion to filtration. And the industries that rely on it are growing every day. More and more industries continue to adopt this new technology. So let's go on in and see what's big in this super small world. Japan has a formidable presence in the field of nanotechnology. And the impressive research being presented here also drew the active involvement of companies and researchers from around the world, with a particularly strong showing from Europe and Asia. Let's begin with what was by far the biggest display at this event, which was naturally presented by Japan's largest technology development organization. This research group is working on carbon nanotubes, which are a tube-shaped arrangement of carbon atoms with a diameter measured on a scale of billionths of a meter. Their single-wall carbon nanotubes, which are far more difficult to make than the more common multi-wall type, are excellent conductors of heat and electricity, and when used together with existing materials, they can greatly improve performance. For example, they can be combined with semiconductor materials like silicon and conductive materials like copper, both of which can be useful in a number of applications. This is a carbon nanotube-based thin film transistor made using a special printing technique. The material is incredibly pure thanks to a special process which can create large numbers of nanotubes at a precisely controlled diameter. They've been able to synthesize single-wall carbon nanotubes that incorporate copper, creating a synthetic material that's up to 100 times more electrically conductive than copper alone. The material is also heat-resistant, which should help prevent burnouts, making it ideal for use in high-performance applications such as automotive electronics. When combined with aluminum, the resulting material is two to four times better at dissipating heat than ordinary aluminum. Potential applications include heat exchangers for aircraft use, which are apparently already in development. 
they're even developing flexible electrodes that combine the single-walled carbon nanotubes with plastic resin. Tiny actuators made from the flexible electrode material allow these creatures to move. The possibilities for small devices make this application of nanotube technology seem particularly promising. Actuators made with the nanotube resin composite material are not only thin and lightweight, they also use very little electricity, making them ideal for use in devices like this next generation braille display for the visually impaired. They're also looking into input device applications and even artificial muscles. So, where is this research heading? え、まずですね、あの、この炭素のカーボンナノチューブはですね、非常に長くてですね、電気をトースということがありますので、え、これからのですね、え、自動車産業ですとか、電気産業にいろんなところの部材として応用できるというふうに思っています。Thanks to their special properties, the future potential for products made with carbon nanotubes is almost unlimited. I can't wait to see what they come up with. This firm, a major player in the chemical industry, primarily manufactures synthetic fibers and plastics. The technology they're showcasing here allows polymer alloys to be formed at a nanometer scale, giving them properties superior to materials made in the past that were mixed on a much coarser micrometer scale. In particular, this means carbon fiber reinforced plastics that are both strong and impact resistant. It also means that less material is necessary in the molding process, making the final product lightweight as well. Well, this may look like it's made of metal, but it's actually been treated with a special process. It's a new way to apply color to a 3D surface. Their nano alloy technology also made it possible to develop a new type of thermal transfer film that combines the seemingly opposite qualities of improved heat resistance and ease of application. It's easy to form at relatively low temperatures and can easily conform to complex surfaces, making it possible to directly apply paint via a thermal transfer process. Paint is applied to the film, which is then applied to the surface to be coated. Once the process is complete, the paint is transferred, coating every area of the part in question, and the film itself is then discarded. This method results in a high-quality finish and also reduces environmental impact. Nanotechnology is also invaluable in the world of pigments, paints, and printing, yielding spectacular results that were almost unimaginable in the past. This special UV offset ink includes superfine particles that give it some special properties. As you can see, this strip is all one color, but when the colors of the surrounding environment or the lighting change, it looks quite different. Take a look. This is the special ingredient that gives luminous its unique properties. When viewed directly, the color appears to be an opaque pastel, but when viewed from an angle, it looks metallic. By adjusting the amount of ink applied, it's also possible to create the appearance of transparency. Both the ease of color control and ability to add a designer touch has made